That's right. Knock it off. Quit being cricket. But you won't. It's all there seems to be. It's either crickets or not. Either excuses or not. Until we start getting active, I don't know what else is going to happen. Everywhere I listen now, there are little statements. You've got to do something about something. Here, I'm not even saying anything uh, in particular. Just something about something has to be done. Otherwise, the way we see the situation in the world now, it gets done to you. And I suppose people can be okay with that, but then I don't know what the conversation is. I don't know what more, more you, you say. No, I suppose maybe nothing. Maybe that's why I see so much of nothing being said in so many places. But that's really not going to help us. So every week I come here behind the woodshed to remind you that. And apparently that's not really a message people want to hear. As I kind of appreciate what Clint Richardson said. Uh, we don't offer hope. There's no hope in this. It's an actual roll up the sleeves and have to go do something. And I've stepped back so far to say, just you find any wrong you you need to make right, start getting involved and in making it right. Whether that's in the things I speak about or not. And then everyone grabs up what I say about how to work it and say, oh, you're going to go use a system against the system. Well, you can characterize anything to make an excuse, can't you? This is what the delineation of new words and trying to overcome the language is about. But there's nothing that stops the underlying principle, which is what I talk behind the woodshed. You're going, to get that, you're going to get that principle. No one wants to go to come by, behind the woodshed. In fact, it's, it's so ridiculous. I happened to check in last night. I happened to go to the uh, the uh, YouTube for RLM's account. I normally don't go into like this morning, uh, the morning before I start the broadcast, just to see how we did, just to see what comments were made, so I get her fresh in my mind. But folks, when uh, when someone like Grimner doing test on, on YouTube, uh, for a new broadcast system that he was getting kicked geared up, has more views than this broadcast. We've got a, we got a serious problem. Serious problem. And I'm not going to blame all that on YouTube. So, not sure where all that goes. I'm just fascinated to watch this broadcast doesn't even get the viewership that a test for a new broadcast system would get the views that it would get. And I want you to maybe think about that just a little bit. How is that? We are so fascinated by tests for new broadcast systems more than information that, well, would make us have to step up and do something about something, wouldn't it? Or I forget and lose it. BTW, for those of you on podcast, podcast, past, cast, recast, whatever we want to do to re-look at this poll broadcast here, syndicated even today for UCY.TV, but Thursday it gets recast. BTW RLM257. And that gets you the content links, which I would hope y'all, y'all go look at because I just, I just touch the headlines, I read some stuff, but it's mostly, mostly these, uh, notice that we call news, whether alt media or not, or MSM. It just gives me threads of conversational subject matter that I can use, hopefully, to advise a thought process on, on what, how, whatever the idea that I come up with is that kind of given you the, uh, the principle underlying the matter that you see that you need to not lose, because that's what the whole process is. This whole process is getting you into the practice of doing things that are demeaning and degrading and, uh, and not fulfilling what you ought to be doing. And you are, whether you agree with me or not, you think you're enlightened and all this other stuff, or you're, you're a woke, you're all woke up? No, you're not. Uh, every one of the listeners, I have a lot, we're, I'm still learning, so I know that's, we're still getting, Sleep, taking the sleep out of our eyes for as much as I'm doing. I may be really moving my fingers and get the sleep out of my eyes a lot more than maybe some other people. But it's still, we're still finding out that there's places that are already set up against us. And, and so we've got a long, a long way to go. And those of you that think you're woke, you're not. I can say it. And I don't insult and I will get more people will fall off the end of the earth and they'll think they're going to go do something, listen to someone else who has better information for them. And it won't work. And I know that from experience. I'm not being arrogant here at all. You may think I am. People seem to respond to me that way. But that's not, it's not the fact. It, it, clearly, you sit down with a, you want to really work out something and you want to sit down and think about what's happening in point for point. 
Anybody who discusses this matters with me will find very quickly that I'm not arrogant, and I'm just pointing out matter-of-fact facts based on objective basis, which we would call the law, uh, from which I use, uh, I work, uh, that you need to work. Why? Because that is the kind of thing that's being used to beat you down. And uh, Dremner made an interesting uh, observation, a little statement tacked onto an observation that uh, he had made at the Freakers Ball. Regarding an email I sent to somebody, uh, Cowboy Tech, I think it was, and a quick, it was a very quick response to the, a certain thing that's happening out, out Oregon way regarding a challenge to the Second Amendment, not being able to buy a gun. And uh, I put in a quick little response just to show a, a problem. At first, I thought it was a good idea. We're going to cover a little bit of that today. How, you, how they, they slip it past you, how they do this, uh, pretty fascinating, how they get the agenda. You want to know, you know the Hegelian dialectic? You want to know about that? Here, here, they're doing it right in front of you. I'm going to give you an example of how this works. I'm not going to predict the future, and I may even act act more of a question to y'all uh, than a, than me finding something because I haven't spoken to the people that are moving this forward. But uh, my response was that based in the reality of how this thing will be dealt with. Then Grimner referred to that citation to uh, Cowboy Tech uh, that I responded and. Uh, hesitated at the point of the FFL, the Federal Firearms License, and said he didn't agree with that. Well, I'm not, when I tell you stuff, and then he said, well, but if that's the way it is, and this is the, this is the thing that, that Grimner said, uh, which I appreciated, uh, finding hearing, was if that's the way, the FFL is the way it is, then if attacking through that will help the guy, then, then more power to him. Was what I'm talking to you guys about. I don't mention some of this stuff because I agree with it. I'm telling you to st- drop what you thought was reality, apply the reality that's going to be applied to you, and counter that reality. Whether or not we actually agree with it or need to change it, that may be another step. But when you have people coming and attacking you, you better you better take up the, the way and the arms and the way they're attacking you and, and become fluid to that. And so I appreciated Grimner's acknowledgement of the fact, well, if that's the way it works, whether or not we agree to it, going through and it helps somebody, then, then more power to him is exactly what I said. That's what I'm trying to get through to people. What I tell you may not be what I agree with. What I'm telling you is this is a, a reality you're going to face. And if you don't come to terms with it, you hear me say this all the time. This is high, highly consistent. You will not prevail at all. You have no chance. And at least when you start doing, the, at least what I call you, the record being made right, you at least start at least giving a record that other people can see with the objective basis, so it's not opinion. We don't get into these arguments that cause a division. What I've been fascinated over these decades, the, de- the decades that I've been working with, and over the years that I've been broadcasting, people get are divided against me on this very point. And so we'll never, ever get accomplished in what we need to do. We'll never drop that point and, and work it out, uh, because we'll be finding excuses to fight amongst ourselves, or just disagree just to not work with each other. Or not to decide to not, I don't want to do it because it's, it's fruitless. But no one ever applied the problem, never applied themselves to the battlefield that I five found. But now you hear the common battlefield of America, all this other stuff. You, you're seeing it now. People are seeing it. They don't understand it. And so anyway, I wanted to acknowledge, a, for me, it was a, that little statement. Well, if that's the way it is, and that gives the guy power, more power to him, that's what I've been saying. We take what we find. Don't make it up. Don't, don't put these utopia ideas in our minds. We take the way we find the system and we use it. We're not using the system. We're using it against the system. It becomes our weapon. I said the double-edged sword, you've got to be careful which hand's cut. Well, why don't you just grab the handle for once? Okay, so, again, uh, for me it was a big deal hearing that little acknowledgement from being stated. I don't agree with this condition, but if that's what you gain the advantage, go for it, is what I've been talking to you about. I take exactly what we find, black and white, so there's no opinion. There's no way someone who's coming with their theory about how their authorita works, you can dis- de- it's decimated in the first few sentences of what you respond with. You don't talk about how much you know. You attack right where they weren't supposed to go, and they were. I'm showing you they're a criminal in intento, no matter what their so-called immunities might be. And we have to work through all those that those things as well. But let me get back before I lose, again, all these things go through my mind. Uh, I wanted to go back. I mentioned something. In a, may, I, some Part of me wants to make these really weird uh, titles. I know it's no good for promotion, but 
<laughs> I want to make some weird titles because I want to get more to the point of what I'm, I'm talking to. And last week's uh, title was uh, to the broadcast was a little bit odd. But it, I was trying to remind you something. I was hoping some of you would go track it down. Uh, I used the word praxis. I said, when you're going to go like the Hegelian dialect, you think that's the end of all, be all. You think that's where it's at. No, it's, it, it starts before that. And it's a, it's a, it's a process. It's a, it's a, well, the word praxis ultimately breaks down to the term practice. And it's the practice of getting you uh, to, uh, to go down the slippery slopes into some other new, uh, new existence of a reality or so-called paradigm. Now, I, I referred to that, and uh, I was hoping some of you would actually d uh, delve in. Maybe you did. I hope if you did, and if you didn't, but are still interested, and maybe because I'm telling you to go look at it a little bit deeper, there's something more to look at there on how you get manipulated, how it's done, how I've come to the point where I knew in 2013 to make the lawsuit against a method against this disturbing and destroying our Republican form representative government and coming to terms with what that really was uh, within the context of the mining law and grants and government, uh, the laws, the obligations and duties, again, on the government, not on us, unless we accept so, uh, that, that can be help, uh, understood, that if you don't understand the practice of how they work this on you, you don't understand the method, you won't get what I'm saying ever, 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 ever. You won't understand what I did in 2013 to come to the point where we sued on that point. That I had understood a long time ago. I figured it out. But it was a gentleman, I hope if you've done some study, and if you didn't, I want to give you the heads up about him. A gentleman that came across my path decades ago, or maybe 20 years ago, after I had been searching, researching where America went about all this stuff, how, what happens to, what happened to us? Certainly not what I remember. And I had identified these, these points that we hear now, you hear a Galilean dialectic and all that, what I called the method, the capital M method that we sued in 2013. I had seen how this was working before I had, I had, this gentleman came across my path who confirmed what I had found. Cause it was at the time back in the nineties, it's the late nineties or so. It's, it's like the wild west of knowledge. You're trying to figure out what the heck is going on here. And so many theories and so many bad ideas. And I'm filtering through all that. Something that's not going on today. I, I can see, uh, but I had uh, an understanding of things that this gentleman confirmed in me, but at a, at a, at a much deeper level, way beyond actually what I would ever need for what I'm, I'm after going, which is the methodology, the, the boots on the ground, traction, meeting the road type stuff. The gentleman's name, and somebody you need to uh, re research up, it'll blow, he probably will blow you away. He opens up one of the first, uh, I'll give you a link in the broadcast or one of his first um, seminars that is done back in 2013. This is years after I met him. He's really got a lot of information now, but he tells you, it's like he getting this information he has to offer you on praxis, but he calls diaprax. It is like a fire hose. So anticipate diaprax. There's a video out there. He'll explain it in a number of seminars. You need to understand, even as fast as he talks, the amount of information he gives you, he shows you, explains how they do things to you that I, I think, why well, I mentioned it yes last week, you need to really research this method. You don't need to know what he knows. You just know about what he knows. And so to me, back when, this is uh, back in the late 90s, and he did a, he, I was, he did a, uh, he came and did a, like a home seminar and I was invited to go. He, he confirmed everything that I was reading. It was like another guy in the world that had found what I had was reading myself. And this is kind of the thing, neat thing about confirmation. You're not the only mind. It sounds crazy, but you're not the only mind seeing it. Well, this guy can go a lot deeper, so much deeper. Uh, I would uh, I would gu guide you to Dean Gotcher. Gotcher. Dean Gotcher. It sounds like it's written just like it said. Look for authorityresearch.com. Be, be ready for the fire hose though on on the on the topic of how you are taken from one paradigm into another. It's the basis of the knowledge that goes on and how they do it to you. Uh, once you see this stuff, and I came at it from my own looking at how the system was doing things within the laws, the black and white, everyone wants to deny and throw down and not use as an authority. The authority that's applicable to them and how, the, and inside that they tell you, they're showing you how they do this stuff. Uh, that they're using, actually, that they're using this this method is how you can see it. Right in the, in the code, in the law, the statute, whatever you want to call them. They're there, the rules, the policies, I don't care what you call them. To me, they're evidence of something and you just keep looking for it. That, uh, again, Dean Gotcher, Gotcher, G-O-T-S-C-H-E-R, authorityresearch.com. 
he will give you the fire hose information on this on this practice, this, the practice that is done against you. This is no different than any other practice. The law practice, medical practice, it's another practice that's put on you, right in your face, on how you get changed, and you won't even know it. Once you know it, though, see, this is the point. You you identify it. As soon as you see the technique working, you there's no question. There's not even a discussion and an argument. Now you're going into defense, offense, or defeat of the other side. And uh, these things that you see, I won't. I've never even thought about him until I did a quick research. I wanted to make sure that what I had told you last week was was what I remember. And I found this seminar link. It's the Diaprax seminar part one. It goes to part four or something like that. I haven't gone through all of them just to hear it. But when I started listening, you, he, he'll sound. He, he has the same points I'm talking to you, but but now he's focused on on this more method that I won't go into. But I want you to know, be aware of it. I spent a long time maybe just repeating myself, but. And it's that important to understand it. You don't have to be a guru on this like this guy is. You may or may not find what he, the, his his basis and foundation to be distasteful. I don't. That's irrelevant to me. You're going to need to listen to how he goes through and explains how you how you're able to be duped. And you need to understand that that process is in play. And I speak to it all the time. And and we sued on it in 2013, about the time his video his seminar was being made. So again, to show you how the parallel. Tracks of research can come to the same conclusions. I've told you a long time ago, there's a, we're in the stinking abyss, or we're at the stinking abyss, or whatever a relationship to the stinking abyss. We call, I'll call it the swamp. We're, we, those of us that do consistent confirma, confirmatory research, all come to the same conclusions, and we find ourselves standing shoulder to shoulder at the edge of that stinking abyss. And I want you to know there's another guy that totally, out of my, I didn't even know about him until he came came before I was brought before, invited to come listen to him. Uh, everything he said is that, man, I found all of that. But he's he's like, he's the professor on that subject matter if you're interested in that. I didn't need more than to know I wasn't incorrect in my observations on how this thing gets done to us. I was more, because of who, what I've been going through to help people, I was more on the application end where we had to protect people. We had to protect the other minors and other other people like that. You know, women and child services, child services, protection services, ch- you know, attacking families. I had to, I've come through that area. I came through trying to use this, these the methods they use against you to, to defeat how they were attacking people. And in part, small part myself as well. I mean, this is where it all starts. It all starts at this mentality attacks you out in the street, kills you. Now it kills you, openly kills you. So I did want to, I did want to make a, uh, take a time here to comment. I hope you were interested in praxis. It, it literally translates to practice, and it's the practice of really changing you, uh, changing your uh, your uh, uh, your perceptions and, and and how that gets done. Pretty long standing, uh, pro, uh, long standing techniques, long long time ago. Beat, beats out everything you've ever heard on the internet, run uh, Bernays and all that other stuff. Okay, this is how they figured it. It's like more linking even before the. Protocols of the Elders of Zion, but this is where I think this is part of that process where they figured out your frailties and how to get at you. And if you don't understand what they're there, whether you believe this in me when I keep telling you this and go read the protocols as a, as your manual of frailty, your own frailty, if you don't believe that, that's fine. This is the fact, and uh, you really need to look at it that way. And this is how they did that to you. This is a picking up those processes and those pieces. That's how I was able to identify why these things are important. It's just not some information or so-called uh, conspiracy, planned conspiracy you see in the future by government, them, whatever they are. No, these are techniques that are applied that you identify that you know it's real. It's how I can quickly tell whether or not somebody's running those that scam or, or actually implementing it. It's a little different here, but running it on you or implementing it against you. Uh, that's how fast this thing starts to work, and I guess I want you to all that if you're in, in earnest on doing, listening to me, and wanting eventually getting to do something. How it, you can reduce your workload by understanding these conditions. It's just not being. It's just not as simple as stating, you know, these simple, trite little statements uh, that we hear all the time, uh, and they don't even come to my mind. It really, it's like it starts to become a block. But uh, what the um, the thesis, the antithesis, antithesis, and then solution. It's, it, those are trite. Those are to get you focused on something that you just parrot. Uh, there's a process underneath all that, and uh, the practice underneath it. It's like just like a magic show. It's a magic. It's just like a just like ma- um, just magic spelling. You know, when you spell, we got spelling. 
the, the corruption of words and the spell, the wording that you spell the word. This is all integrated somehow in different ways and different levels. That uh, as soon as you see it, you can move right into what you need to move. And this is how I, I'm able, I, at least I hope I'm able, it seems to replace, re, re, uh, repeat itself over and over, how I'm able to cut right through to certain points and get right at the fact. I cut through all that, that which has been thrown up in your face as a snowstorm, a blizzard, confetti, whatever it is, to blind you uh, to the core issue. And so uh, that's what uh, something started to happen uh, going into this week. That I mean, I'm going to focus here on a little bit on it. Before I get to that point about, and this will be relating to how you're subverted in your so-called Second Amendment rights and all this other stuff, how the uh, the new the new agenda is pushing itself. And in the news articles, you can see it actually calls your attention to them. When you see the, the players come in, immediately you realize this is a big game, big play. Uh, whether or not it extends further is uh, is up for a, a, I guess a, an argument, a dialogue, a debate. But really, the point is that it is happening. They are triggering things, not triggering you. They trigger things, which then trigger you. And I want to go through that a little bit today. In a moment, when I before I touch that, I want to go to an interesting piece of information, something that uh, they got us in dialogue you, on both sides of this thing uh, on this argument. Typically, we're I'm on the side of the the fact that a corporation that goes along and uh, doesn't disclose certain uh, things to you under the uh, uh, underneath the banner of of uh, look how altruistic we are to save the world and humanity and feed the, the billions, uh, I have a problem with. That's part of the method. So I have a big problem with that. Well, the report comes out again uh, about Monsatan. Uh, what what the Monsatan papers tell us about corporate science, uh, and, and this is the big another big problem. Uh, this uh, so-called corp you can call it corporate science. It, it's really agenda science. It's a, it's not even science. I hate using the word, but I don't know what else to say to convey what they think they're telling you. This is across the board. This is special interest, conflict of interest proofs uh, to get you uh, to build a com- conflict in a condition, in your perception of a condition, and then interfere with your ability to come to an answer. And while all that's happening, they're coming, they've got the system locked down to come to the answer which they impose upon you. And so, for those of you that want evidence of this thing, you can come and now get this uh, article uh, regarding uh, what they're calling the Monsanto papers, like the Monsatan uh, show, a Monsatan paper show the company's real and rather troubling approach to science and evidence. Revelations include confirmation that the company hardly tested the real-world toxicity of its products, actively avoided pursuing studies which might show unwelcome results, and ghost-wrote the studies of supposedly independent scientists. The documents also show Monsatan systematically attacked scientists whose research threatened their profits, as aptly summarized in the 2001 email with a link to these emails by a Monsatan executive. Now, again, I could read on and on. This is uh, how they set up the record on the public comment side. We found this on Jefferson Mining District coordination through going in and being able to sit as a government. The Jefferson Mining District is a a literal miners' government recognized by Congress uh, under the mining law. Uh, This is one of the powers behind it that allows us to do uh, things that you can't do if you're not affiliated. You, those of you that are the subjects of all this, have to go through your county or some through some uh, district that's been established. So now the word district alone tells you we're in some trouble. But let's not go. Let's not travel that way today. The fact is that you are, don't have direct input unless through the process, and, and in this case, the public comment. Well, the insiders, uh, the companies, go right directly to the agencies, and they have their own commenting and, and establishment of these of this process of being allowed to push their thing through. Uh, the thing that they will profit from if they can make the record show a certain way. So I want to reinforce that part. If you make the record show a certain way, uh, then it, it goes through. Well, Jefferson Money District, we had our coordinators. They're involved with the uh, coordinating with the with the agencies over the kind of information they're providing as evidence, and we were able to decimate all of it. So we make a record to decimate all of it. Now all of a sudden, what they can't they can't do what they were going to get through when the record before didn't have somebody's direct participation in it. Now, for the peanut gallery, which would be you in public comment, you'd, you're not without force and effect, because if you establish 
the insufficiency, what they call a meaningful process and a meaningful interpretation of the pro of the contributions made to that process, you now have standing to go stop to stop and enjoin that. And as I've told you, these injunctions are pretty quick. They're within two two weeks, unless you allow the other side to delay it. Or, as if we're finding out, although it doesn't end the process, we find the court itself interferes. That's another thing that's going on. I told you about the, the suits that were filed. The courts themselves are interfering. To me, that's fine, because it doesn't stop the original complaint, nor the default of the other side. Now we have a, a obstruction of justice, and an obstruction of access to the court, and interference of a, of a remedy under the Constitution to protect what the solemn obligations and duties of the government were. So we have sit a we sit in a whole different position uh, than us asking for anything. So these were supposed to be provided as a matter of the process that we were involved in. In other words, a grantee accepting a congressional grant is, is disposed in a certain way and has to have certain protections that the government's, uh, the government, other parties, of the, other branches of the government are interfering with. I'd rather be in arguing, not on an argument, of exposing that than I would be to ask them for anything. And I hope you would be considerate of that too, that these, this is how the government is set up inside the agencies for the producers of profit making material, which I keep telling you the bottom line is going to be the bottom line. It's not you. They don't care about you. You heard last week, I was telling you, it's my, to my dismay, people believe the police are out, still out there to protect you. Refer, I, I give you plenty of links and things to read to show you uh, that is the practice that they've got, the praxis of Moving you into that belief. They've got you all believing it. Is your vulnerability to everything I tell you you're vulnerable to. That if you don't actively move against it, you will be continued the ring in your nose, as I used to say, and I can say it right now. You're going to continue being the accessory to the crime against you. That the Mount Satan Papers explains now more of the nuts and bolts of how they pull this thing off. The magic show behind the scenes. Partly, uh, I could see, partly what we found with the the scientists, the adjective scientists, and the BLM, uh, the biology, the fish and wildlife people, all those, it's all the same process, folks. So once you see how the process works, once you understand uh, the information of praxis through, and Dean Gotcher's, uh, you know, deep study of it, you don't really need that much, but if you know, if you can keep up with him, then more power to you, because that's just going to make it faster for you to understand what's going on. You too can cut through how the nonsense works. And when I'm telling you about this news, these articles that have evidence for you, that's what I'm talking about. You can engage this thing and, and, and over, over some time, and it wouldn't be that terribly long, but over some time, mo tens of thousands of us moving in the right direction and on point. Like I was trying to explain the dapple thing that I got beat, you know, got everyone riled. Anybody who was un uh, uh, sympathetic to the Indian cause didn't understand that there was a stakeholder, will not agree with me, and attack me, and then left. You know, no one's listening to me, what I said. And it, and that, that problem, that regurgitated problem keeps coming up and coming up and coming up over and over again. And you just don't listen to the basic process that is hand, sitting there. You don't even understand all the rights you think you have, all the Constitution. You're handed the due process and don't accept it. And then you blame someone for you not picking up the due process is really kind of a travesty in my mind, uh, at least. Dismay. And to, to not listen to what I'm suggesting to help advance that position for you, it, it seems like the self-inflicted wound also, which is a microcosm of the governmental problem, isn't it? It's all, it's all together to me. I don't see really much difference. Uh, so Monsatan Papers here uh, has evidence for those of you that want to put uh, forth the information, uh, maybe even local decisions that are being made uh, regarding uh, the use of chemicals or pesticides, and you don't want to be the victim of, you want your, your property to not be affected, uh, and maybe there's a decision being local, you can bring these things in here. And I wouldn't just focus on the fact of how you would show that there's a deception. I want you to focus on the method that they use. And once you see that, you'll watch your governments even following this method. And this is how I found it. This is how I understood about black, what I call black hole funding. This is what I, how I understood black hole funding before Walter Burian's CAFR. Um, exposure. That's how I understood it. What we sued in 2013 was the black hole funding to advance systems of destruction through the government. Did I mention the CAFR? No. I just know it's there and I know what to look for. 
And once I see it, I know what I'm I'm going after. You say, follow the money? Yeah, we followed the money. Was the, we didn't even, I told you, we didn't even go after the thing that was hurting the miners the most, which was that the, the prohibition, the so-called moratorium. No, we went after the money funding it all. Now, why do we do that? Because it attacked then the EPA, which is the grant source funding stream that this whole thing comes through. And, and so I, I guess I just give you, I repeat myself here, but to give you, remind you of the insight, once you see the method, how they're doing it, you're not after the tr trinkets that hand you of the evidence of that they did it. You're, un you're going in after how they did it. That's what you start to address. And you show how that was not consistent with the law. Everyone wants to make a question about this. Or the policy. You show that with, with that non-disclosure, that failure to disclose, the malfeasance, the, the fraud, you show it can't, the thing can't come against you that is going to if you don't, I guess is the other problem. So, uh, Monsatan, the papers is up. How they, uh, you know, they twist these words about how this is going to be on science and all this stuff and uh, the sound science, it's all just a method to convince, uh, make a record to convince, to give someone else the, inside of government the authority to come and hurt you. It's just a little bit. And, and uh, so, I repel, repeat that part. So, so we see this Monsatan thing as a multinational company. Then in the same news, we get this other report. It just, you know, I don't know what to do about this. I want to strangle people. But this is what's going on. This is why you see the UN is, is toothless, absolutely useless, if, it, if you wanted it to be, uh, that there is no check and balance to someone who's a rogue in the world, literally understood to be an occupying force without right, a rogue in the world killing people, and there's no one to stop it. It has to tell you we don't live in a just world. Uh, we're just cause, no just cause, that there's no remedy and accountability that you're going to expect by the people that are officials unless you step up and start to make it happen. That here we have Monsatan papers showing us that they're, they're, they're showing us that the stuff that they're doing isn't really tested for its toxicity and how bad. And I want to remind you something. You know, we talk about glyphosate. We talk about the, uh, the, 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 the patent and what glyphosate does. But when you go to the term called Roundup, that's a product. And inside that product, there's other material. They call them inert materials relative to what the active ingredient is supposed to do. And we found out, and I've reported here, that those inert, so-called inert ingredients are more toxic. And those never get studied. It's the same thing in vaccines. Okay? Same method, folks. I'm telling you, once you see the method, I gotta jump that over. It's easy to see how they do this. But here we're not, we're, we got evidence that Monsatan doesn't tell you how toxic, you don't even really check for all this stuff. The government says, eh, that's okay. And now we have this rogue in the world, Israel, caught illegally spraying toxic herbicides on Palestinian farms, destroying their food. A war crime, in any other sense, any other reality, a war crime. Uh, when I read, I see these stories, I don't know, like, I don't want to get to, to say I'm beside myself. But this shows you it's an evidence of the same method, working against to destroy a, a group of people. This is a genocide. And they're using chemistry that has not actually been told to you how bad it is, is how bad these people are. Israel is being accused of illegally spraying toxic herbicides on Palestinian farmlands along the border between the Gaza Strip and the occupied Palestinian territories, causing significant damage to the Palestinian agricultural crops. Now, I don't even know why I have to say more and why that doesn't shock people. And that doesn't cause some stir to do something in order to show and, and, and watch out. I told you if they're willing to do it over there, they're doing it to you here. Just a little bit. Now, how much is that you're going to tolerate? They've got you agreeing to this nonsense. They've got you agreeing to this commerce state that has the right to do what it will. And I didn't get to it last week. I ran out of time. But I was going to point out that uh, even in documents I've read before, I've looked over, is the answer, con again, another confirmation. My studies proved out about this commerce connection about the nation called the United States of America. And my view on all that was, okay, well, there's certain things that are not in commerce. And how about if we step over there? And maybe we start defending ourselves from that capacity. And this gets us into the, why do you have to have a license for a firearm? 
Why? It's not in Congress. But this is what we uh, we accept because they use terms that they haven't fully disclosed to us. And we just call it, oh, that's just semantics. Uh, no, that's the method. Folks. That's the, the weapon against us. Uh, I can't, I look at this thing, I can't imagine, I can't believe that anybody would allow someone to to spray, not with whatever their status is, rogue, occupier, legitimate. Who who really allows the spraying of herbicides to spray over and kill your food? Well, isn't that happening in America also? Isn't that one of the big questions about the uh, the so-called organic farms of, and the wines and all that and the overspray? Yeah. So they're already doing it here. We just don't look at it that way. Uh, but here we go. If, if we're going to allow, if the United States is going to allow uh, them uh, allow businesses to do it to you, why wa- would they step up? against a rogue Israel committing genocide against the Palestinian people. Why not? It is is a you should you should really look at that. You should kind of consider that. Contemplate that because it's it's at home for you folks. You don't see this, but this is the the problem. Uh, ex Mossad head admits the aiding Al Qaeda fighters in, in in Syria. Again, we've heard this news. It the guy now admits it. I've always liked I always like the admissions coming from uh, the people who are denying or or, or or acting coy, like we find from on Satan in their emails. That's all it is. It's just their admissions that they're. It's beyond. It's a confession again in conviction, folks. I don't have to now work so hard that way. I just better step up and do something with it. Is I guess my own other observation. But what uh, what do we need to know more when the next Mossad head uh, says it admits that Israel is, is aiding Al Al Qaeda, folks? Why is this still a question? Why don't why don't we have a bigger noise, a, 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 a substantial more just than a noise, a noise that causes the walls, the edifices of the authority to fall regarding this nonsense in the Middle East? It is really a fascination to me. Now I say that, and my my question comes right in my own mind. But what am I doing about it? Well, I'm I'm tapped, folks. I'm about at the end of what I can get done. I can't barely take on any more. I can't take on anymore, actually. I can do it in a short term, like I, you know, I can respond to someone's email, what comes off the top of my head, that I think is absolutely right and, and defensible, uh, but that's that's probably the limit. And so I'm I'm tapped. I'm doing what I think are the wrongs I need to make right. I, I'm working toward. It, it involves helping lots and lots and lots of people. I can't turn my gaze from that to go fight something that's in another another place on a different point but would use the same underlying laws that, that I have told you about. I've talked to you about in that context. You destroy, listen, in the United States of America, you destroyed someone's food or animal, you interfere with, by code, their food or animals on their on their land. That's that's defined as sabotage. Why don't we hear more people charging officials that attack the land property owners with sabotage? I don't know. It's there to do. It could be formed the basis of an injunction against an imposition. Why don't we hear more people exercising this thing to make the record that it's going on instead of everyone suffering silently? So we have a, a, an ex Mossad admitting, and you need to hit, you need to get the link, and you need to hear it come out of his mouth. You need to see how he hesitates. What's going on? Uh, I was going to play the tape. I'm not going to do it. Uh, play the file. I'm not going to do it. You, you need to see it if you're that interested. You need to hear how these guys couch and hesitate in order to understand how deep the deception is and that he got it, and, and the good interviewer got him to cough it out. To understand, you have a whole lot more work to do than just be a passive listener. And then beyond that, it's what what do we start to work toward? What message do we start to send? Here we have people that are supporting LCIA. Duh, that's not a question to me. Again, the United States of America is is a criminal. And it, it ought not be where it is, but it is. It's all over the world. It's acting the big brute and bully. You're, you're watching one country, at least one country, and possibly a two, which becomes the next focal point, resisting being integrated by the, by the global board, and, and in particular Russia, saying, I'm not going to, we're going to become self, in this case a nation becomes self-sufficient. But it's 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 people be, it, the, the men and women become self-reliant. The nation has to su- provo- suffi- sufficiently provide for itself and not be dependent on any other 
any other nation is what you want, what you're seeing Russia doing, and you see, and you've been watching the the attention being turned to Russia. So, anyway, so that's the method. This is the focus. Uh, you will be dependent. Now, if the government, the government is going to make you dependent, and they're going to promote the UN uh, globalization uh, to and try to go outward, they're already doing it inward. I don't know why this is such a big thing. I don't know why people argue with me. I don't know why you don't understand it. It's not about your utopia. It's about what's really going on. And if you're not addressing that, then you're just the accessory of the crime against you. And I don't know what you're talking about. That, or you're aiding and abetting it because you're not stopping it. That's the uh, that's in law, folks. I don't have to worry about it. Oh, that's the law. Yeah, that's right. That's what principle applied does. If you allow a crime to go on against people or yourself just because you want to get along, you're allowing uh, the crime, you're aiding and abetting the crime against others. That's in, in the objective basis of this of the standard we're all supposed to be living by if we intend to live in a better place. Why wouldn't we? I would like to hear MarkOnTheBeastYahoo.com explain to me how that wouldn't be what we want to, to see. But uh, We can aid and abet by our, our, our excuse to not engage the, uh, the, the, the bully beating up some other people. Well, then we have a complaint that they come beat us up. What kind of world is that? That's not peace. And that happens because you take a utopia idea that, oh, the world ought to be this way. Well, it's not. If it's not, now what? There's a reality for you. Now what? You go wish and hope and pray to whatever direction in place that it changes because you wish and hope and pray for it? No, that's not the way this world works. Uh, so, Israel's been uh, fortified, working with the CIA to do all these moderate rebels, which the term you kind of see fall, the terms fall away. They're making up new ones so that you get to your mind, you get practiced also, the practice of being uh, agreeable to these changes without making a solid basis. It's why I have such a problem with the, um, I don't even know their names, sorry. Um, I was going to say it, it came up and it went away. Uh, the guys that take words and they make it's 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 unique. It's cool. It's I like to hear it because it's kind of neat twist on terms and phrases, and, and they go through like the birth canal and all this, and they go through this to put you in admiralty. It's a bunch of nonsense. It's cool. It's creative, but it's a bunch of nonsense when you understand it. That that's not how the mechanism of it works. But it's a good tale and it sounds cool. And so we embrace that, and we think now that we know that, that's how it all works. And that's not how it works. Nothing works that way. They'll work anything that they need to to get over on you. That's what they're doing. And if you want to get into these, playing these terms and confining them into what you, what someone else tells you that they really are, and, and you want to give up your responsibility to believe it because that guy says so without testing any of this, shame on you, I guess. And you're just doing that to not get engaged. Shame on you again. Which I don't like doing shaming, but here you go. Shade, I'm, you're triggering me now. Folks. See how that works? I can be triggered now. Convince me I'm not triggered, right? This is how the, 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 the new meme going around. This is how this all works against us. No one takes a principal stance and then acts in principle, with principle. To not allow what's not principle. So what do you do when when someone comes against your your uh, your allies, your 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 gang member buddies? Uh, together with this Israel acknowledgement, now if we had a question before that they're actually helping to support, you need to hear how he he evades the point about how they're doing it. Oh, it's just for humanitarian. We lead with a humanitarian purpose. Yeah, go listen to that. They take these terms and they lead you around, and you think half listen to what's going on. So what happens when someone actually goes against an ally and ISIS? Uh, we find evidence all, all coming together. French prosecutors officially charged Marine Le Pen for tweeting against ISIS terrorists. So when you come out and you actually talk against it and you're part of a coalition partners, your government's prosecutors will come and attack you. So those of you that are going against the government should expect to be attacked. What I've been saying is if you set it up right, you're not putting, you're not putting yourself in jeopardy to do so. Why? It's not because it's so, oh, you're so smart and smug and arrogant about it. No, that's how you continue to battle. Otherwise, they got you locked up. They got you fighting over the thing they got you. They have you moved over 
and they practice, they do their legal practice on you, and you're going to be arguing that point instead of the one that you need to be doing. Now, hopefully she's aware enough, and it sounds like she might be, to be able to bring this and expose it even bigger. I hope she can do that. The underlying point is here that the governments are supporting uh, a rogue nation in the Middle East to destroy the Middle East. And it isn't, it's just the, it's the festering wound that sits over there. And I'm telling you, if you look over there, and if they're going to do it to those people, they're going to do it, and they are doing it to you. So, if you go up against ISIS, expect to uh, be attacked if you're in France. If I want the French people that may be listening behind the woodshed, uh, consider that. Consider that. Consider how this all really, really works. Do as we say, not as we do, I suppose. Uh, <clears throat> then it expands on these, again, these term shifting, which I don't consider are semantic. I consider them weapons. Uh, this, this fact of them doing this is part of the method, and uh, they will use it to get you to not become active. Uh, this happens all the time. And, or if you are active, to put you on a defensive mode. And why I say the defeat to this is a going, uh, and, and anybody who, who di- or argues with me about the law, will have no defense, because that law can be used as an objective basis, which otherwise is just your opinion and can be used against you, because you have no foundation, and can point to none, and can point, point to none that everyone is supposed to uh, be be recognizing. Now, would I agree with any particular thing? Maybe or maybe not. That's not my point. My point is, is that we you need to go to a foundation that you can press against everyone to have to follow, but one that you've shown you're not in violation of and can't be found in violation of. And therefore it can't be used against you, and you can use it against anybody who uh, who wants to uh, cause trouble. We do this all the time uh, with the uh, process of talking about attack, government agencies t- attacking property rights. And I'm going to show you how that works out here when I get up to it. But So the, this term... Changing the terms, going through these different, uh, the different, adjusting how the perception of what you do and think about things and then how that will cause you to address something or not be able to is all important in this method. The practice of getting you to shift the paradigm and part of that is because you will not assert, take the responsibility, you will not get stiff in your backbone in order to assert the responsibility of what principle ought to be followed. Uh, or not ought to, that will be followed, forget the ought, but will be followed and exposing the other one to try and diminish or degrade that to anybody else's harm. Huffington Post claims globalist is anti-Semitic. So if you think that words aren't weapons, uh, you really need to step back and take another look. This is not semantics. This is a This is a weapon, and it's used against you. And all the process, you're going to listen. If you listen to Dean Gotcher, uh, you will listen and you will hear how words are used to make you believe that you are doing one thing when you're actually not. These are weapons. This is not semantics. You can pretend and play games with them. That's fine. I have a lot of fun sometimes with words and how how, how rotten English in the American language is, actually. How... How undefinitive a definitive it is, is a lot of fun. As I point out, simple one, it's not fun, but the, the point of fact, the word sanction neither means to prohibit or it means to allow. How do you, how, how do you communicate when you have a language like that? And so, that's part of the, 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 the weapon against us. But the typical words here, now globalist means anti-Semitic. How, how they take this logical leap is not, well, it is a logical leap, it's not reasoned leap. Uh, but it doesn't matter. They take it. They go for it. You know, uh, we could go through the discussion. Uh, how how a globalist is, is anti-Semitic is fabricated by this media, the, the, the power of the media. In fact, the fact that this Huffington Post did this shows they're not actually capable of being the media. They really are just a weapon. They're looking for the opportunity to re-engage your perception in order to bring about a a, and a, the agenda we say, it's the plan that's before us that we may or may not understand. Yeah, I want to go through, I, I want to read the stuff, but I don't want to read it. You're either interested to know how they do this, how this works out, the authorities are coming to bear upon it, why they pop up, or, or you're not. 
and everyone it seems is, you know, of these kinds are of these kinds of, of things are looking for opportunities at every point to make this attack. I, I I'm still back. You want to bring the, the Semitic into the Palestinian, the land of Palestine, which is even too too late is the word. Then then we bring all Semitics, including Arabs, into this. Is that is that what a globalist is? Well, obviously not. It would no. It would be located in that one spot. See, so this is how how they do it. But they won't give you the proper and proper definition for what a Semite is. No, we have people that misconstrue what a Jew is, and uh, and I will agree only to the point that because of a, a source information called the Bible that says the first or the uh, an understanding and the concordance within uh, the analysis of which says that the the original Jew came from Judea. Just south of Jerusalem, where Bethlehem is the northern reach south of that, then if you if you can tell me you have title to land there, your ancestry comes there, I will understand that you are the an acknowledged Jew. But there was other people living around that as area as well, and these were a Semitic people. And those were not all the people that lived in there. They were just the style, that type of people. If we want to start getting back to par parsing out specifics, then we can have a discussion. When we start allowing media or these people in without a claim against them to show, to explain to other people that you see the problem and a, a, a vast outcry over how they did this, when and in ways that I've suggested where you put the two opposing terms in one sentence so it's clear to everyone what it is that the problem is. You define the problem in the sentence you stay. One sentence, not an on and on paragraph. When you start to speak like that and start making those records publicly in mass, we we're going to start to see an end to this, this weapon against us. You want to call yourself a Jew? I want to see the title to the to your motherland. Then all I'll know is one of two things. You're a, you're a Semite and or an Israelite. That's the extent of this whole thing. That gives you no special more privileges than the other the rest of that group. Now you start allowing people to start parsing it down like this, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because they build a mass of this uh, weapon, this mass weapon against you. And it's very difficult to, to parse through because they just keep jumping from one term to the next. Then it is semantical. The semantics is you're stuck in that paradigm. And you're going to lose. Every time they do it, they're going to pummel you some more. So you don't, we don't accept, we shouldn't accept this stuff. Uh, however this came about, we can't accept it. We can't just know it's there and not say anything. We have to address it so that we make a public, uh, the public comment, the real, the public, in the public arena. And we, and we place, we place those two things together and we, we say in a way, and there's lots of ways to say this, but just to get to the point, how dare you? So that's establishing your line and then challenges on the face, not asking anybody for their answer. Just how dare you co co opt this and co mingle this this term with an with an inaccuracy or for the purposes of an agenda to hurt people, to diminish people in ways we can't even possibly know. Anyway, just an example to me. A globalist has ended, how stupid is that? But they did it. Jew centric. And it's not even Jew centric. That's what they want you to believe. Let's move over to another word. It's not the answer, but it gives us a better focus on the parts and pieces that are being played on the global multidimensional chess game that we're, we're involved in. We don't seem to be understanding. The Zionists. A movement. Not a religion. Not a land. A it's a political orientation. Advanced by fraud, no less. And they're doing it on these term obfuscation and acceptance by the people everywhere. Now, I'm using the word people really advisedly. Please, uh, I can only do so much behind the woodshed. There's so many things we have to nail down a lot clearer. You, know, you talk about the people, and I tell you the whole people's not the people, and the whole people's not you. Uh, what does that do in your mind? The people is not you, and the whole people is not the people. 
What does that mean to you? Do you have any concept on it? Is it just gibberish? I am not talking gibberish just to end that question. I just said something of fact. Specific definitions that guide us into a proper understanding on what we're dealing with and who, when those things are said. And if we can't get to that level, we have no way to address what's going on and we'll be forever subject to this so-called triggered condition, the PC. What's PC? What's politically correct about a fraud is, is my only observation anymore. And if you don't understand how that's happening to you, Dean Gotcher's information will give you the fire hose knowledge on how that works. But that's not the end-all, be-all. I said half of it. I mean, most of that you won't even really need. He'll just give you the depth of it. What you need to know is that it's happening and how to avoid it running you down and then still accomplish your mission. But anyway, this is pretty insultive at some level. Globalist is anti-Semitic. Uh, obviously not true, but this is still what they get people to say, that we need to have a better word in our mouth about this is a method destruction that eventually comes to knock on your door, comes to knock on your statement, on your action, on what you are trying to convey. It's a prejudice that you walk into, that you, Gordian not, that you're going to have to untie. And if you don't, it, it looks fruitless and futile. And it is. And it, uh, literally, it is. I just, if you don't approach this more correctly, it is. Absolutely defeats you at every turn. And so well, now I'm going to move into where I was going to go in the, in the analysis of something that came up. And I hope I can get through this um, this process here. Uh, the, the terminology, the imposition of things. Uh, the acceptance and perception, the connotations made that are made just by a mere suggestion, the prejudices that we lock into, what we tie together, what we disregard when we hear these things, what we throw under the bus without without any more. Um, again, well, I appreciated Grimner making that little he hesitation, but he still said it. Yeah, I guess if that's the way this is, if that's you have to use the FFL to help this guy, then more power to him. That's the point. This is what all we have. So you, you can either decide to use it or don't use it. And if you don't use it, it's, it's dead. You're dead. It's called it's death. If you do use it, it may be something you don't agree. It's distasteful. But it's the only thing you had to survive. What are you going to choose? I really, I, I'd really want to know, in the, in the Florida case, if, a, if the little angel popped up right in the moment and said, here's a 45 semi-audio against the guy guy coming down the hall, and he's telling it to a teacher that's anti-gun. Would that teacher take the gun? I I have a hard time believing the teacher wouldn't take the gun. I, and at that point, their belief system crashes due to the necessity of reality. It's not semantical. It's a reality that you have to identify, and hopefully accurately, and then respond to it. And that doesn't necessarily be the whole world is so dire a response. But we have this thing coming out through this Florida, and it became an agenda. I can watch it, but something came up near the end, just happened with an email to me, got me looking at some stuff. I wasn't interested in all. I got so many other things to do, but it certainly made a pattern and exposed the method again, that you can tell this whole thing is a setup, folks. But came out right after that, teachers with guns, remember the question, Trump said that we should arm the teachers. Well, that's not a new idea. It was just kind of I, I talked about about every time the school shooting happens. But it's kind of gotten more and more traction. And in fact, we're going to find out right out. it wasn't the next day, Seattle kicks in to start taking guns. Just like he said, for all of you that kind of rah-rah around Trump. I'm, I, I don't get it, folks, what you guys are promoting here. It's an ongoing process of destruction. Teachers with guns was the question. Russia Today, RT, debates possible militarization of U.S. schools after Florida shooting. First paragraph, RT guests have sparred over Donald Trump's suggestion that teachers should, be, should carry firearms to protect their students from maniacs. One called it an effective deterrent, while another said it would mater, mi, militarize schools. There's your debate. There's your issue that they want you to buy into. They use a term to destroy the condition underlying the principle. Now we're getting a debate does it, about it militarizing and it, whether or not it's a good idea. And my observation, just a, 
just kind of throw it out there to get people not to buy into this stuff. Again, remember, it's public buy-in. If you want to remember the guy that used to tell you that all the time, William Roberts would tell you all the time. This is it. Public buy-in. That's what public comments or facilitated meetings are, are made. The dialectic process gets you to buy into something lesser than uh, lesser than what you would actually do if you hadn't had the mind control and technique, the praxis uh, of being put through a system that would come to you. You wouldn't come to that. It, I asked the question here. Again, a lot of my questions are rhetorical. Uh, they aren't really a question. I, I don't think they are. Uh, but it, I, I don't know what else to do to get people to at least inquire a little bit more than just shut, shut the whole thing down because of their predilections of what they think about a gun or the word military or militarization or whatever, or, or, or any and all that stuff. But I ask, is it militarizing schools or allowing teachers again to enjoy the Second Amendment? So we throw out the word, uh, as, a, as a RT throwing out the word militarization, it's not just there, it came out in a lot of other places. Is it militarizing schools or, you know, we have an underlying right in this country, United States of America, a Second Amendment, and it has a real purpose. Whether or not we should exercise it, it's a whole different issue. But what wasn't the constraint against keep and bear actually a violation relative to the prohibition against government imposition? Is it militarizing schools or allowing teachers to again enjoy the Second Amendment? I think is more to the point to expose the militarization is not the issue. I don't want to get into that argument. It will get us nowhere. It just gets us into this debate. And then I make this other observation. If you can't trust teachers to prepare for life, how can you trust them to teach your sons and daughters? Because the question is, we're going to get a gun and a teacher and a gun, and they're going to be shooting students. Well, aren't you handing a gun, a edu- gun of educa- the weapon of education, to a teacher? For I say your sons and daughters, not your child. Not the state's ward required to be there that way. No, are you taking responsibility to place yourself in, in front of a teacher that educates, not inculcates, indoctrinates, your son and daughter. You're the property of your union. Your offspring, not the state's child, not you as the custodial parent to the state's ward. These terms are weapons, folks. They're not semantics. They identify things. And you make a label for something, you can well, very well know you own it. It's all right here to see. I ask something else. If it turns out the teacher's can't be trusted because they are Sovietized, why allow schools? Well, I bring Sovietized up, folks. You'll find in the praxis, uh, the diaprax that you hear from Dean Gotcher, that is what you're moving yourself into. It's what the UN moves you into. The Soviets, not Russia. you gotta get, you got to start understanding the specifics about this. It's the origins of people that know you better than yourself creating systems and processes and methods to undermine you over time to accomplish their goal, which is your destruction, essentially, at least the way I perceive it from the United States of America, which is literally the most unique place in the history of man that I can find for a couple of things. And in particular, it's property laws, and, and you all pee on peanut gallery types get to own some. Exclusive. Now, Got the problem with di- with the with the uh, eminent domain, but I've answered to that as well. It is a problem unless you have an answer, and so I will go over that side. So if, if it turns out the teachers can't be trusted because they are Sovietized, that's the whole entire indoctrination system. You're looking at the public education system right now, folks. In that one sentence, I put in the question the problem. If if they can't be trusted because you find out they're Sovietized and you can't trust the teachers, why are you allowing schools, why are you allowing your sons and daughters to go there in the first place? And if you don't, then are they subject to this problem and this question of the militarization of the schools? No. The reason why I asked the first question. When it was okay to teach kids in school, literally teach, and all the pictures I see was funny, uh, not funny, but interesting. A lot of girls were being taught at the time, the pictures I've seen, in schools to use rifles. Even though, consider this, they weren't, at the time, 
able to get into the military. This is a whole different concepting that's missed about the Second Amendment. That's why there's a bigger standing army if we would ever choose to do so. And I don't, I'm still, you know, I'm on record to say I'm not so, so sure we want to pull that trigger, even though we have 70 or million or so arms that would come out of the, out behind every blade of grass to defend ourselves. Talk about an unorganized chaotic mass. But at any rate, we have a bigger standing army because of the so-called founding fathers requirement that the history showed that the people have to protect themselves against their government at any time, at any place, that girls were taught how to shoot guns. This is not an unusual in the other parts of the world. You look over at the uh, over at Turkey, uh, excuse me, uh, Kurdistan, uh, all their women shoot. In fact, their women shoot an Arab uh, or a Muslim. Uh, that could mean a nasty business for the, uh, for the uh, faithful Muslim. You don't get killed by a woman. Otherwise, you're, uh, you're, you're forever vanquished and destroyed. So, interesting. They used to teach it in school. They don't now. Why? Because your schools are Sovietized. My question is the problem. So, Sovietized and military, you want to start arguing that? You are blending the two together and you're agreeing to it. That's the method. You have to find ways to avoid it. I hope I can do it through my Twitter, behind a woodshed, periodically, through these issues. My questions are the point, as I conceive the problem, as they are misdirecting you. I make no, as I think about it, I'm not making any judgment on, on, on the media that did it. I'm saying that's what they're doing. Whether they know or not, I don't know. But that's what they do. And we start to see this question of the militarization, the continuation of, of, of the question and the debate. They want the continued debate. Why? Because the debate creates a point when eventually, officially, the official gets to answer the question, doesn't it? And officially, that's the control, ultimately, isn't it? And that's the problem which you may not be paying attention to. As I was talking also, there last week we were talking about this. They were going to ban, uh, they were going to change the law in Florida. Florida makers passed a gun bill that allows arming some school staff, and we went through that provision. Well, in that was also the raising of the limit to, from 18 to 21. And I told you that's a serious problem. But that's the method we use. That they now trying to get that, de- that even that, that little bit of infringement from 18 to 21. You don't understand what it is, but they're trying to make this law. Uh, the law, they, well, it is the law at this point. It's being challenged, I understand. Whether or not it's being challenged properly, I haven't read the complaint, and I'm not one to really answer that because the courts now, you see, the court, it's now given to the Bar Association to decide. And so based on whether or not they can get the public perception up high enough to agree that that's okay, will be what the deciders in the Bar say, whether or not they could get away with it. This is the same group that's an NGO agreed by the UN that has a barrel of a, uh, the knot of a, the knot tied in a barrel of a pistol in a plaza. You see how they move you along. This is all part of the thing I see as of now a plan about what happened behind this. Whether or not it happened, whether or not it was a false flag, what, whatever, it's being used. It's a crisis that's not going to go to waste, folks. And I see this now because of a thing that happens, uh, uh, and I, again, just a, an email link that's sent to me about something that happens uh, that I didn't really, wasn't aware of, that starts to tie all this t- together for me that I don't know if people appreciate that I decide I want to talk about. The FBI now admits it couldn't it could have prevented the Florida high school shooting. Of course it could. So now it's causing a bunch of problems, but you see the problem is about guns and the raising the limit. They've already passed the law. Even though the FBI could have stopped this. Of course they could. They invent this stuff as well on top of it all. Everybody had enough information. So you're going to find all the evidence that the government's not here, literally not here to help you. Now, you can roll your eyes and say, well, no, duh, it's Florida anyway. Okay, fine, you can say that. That's just, that's not standing up to a responsibility that ends up being allow, allowing you to protect yourself as these people work incrementally to steal everything away from you. Remember, House... Resolution, delegates resolution to the bar, where appropriate, we're going to apply, apply all this globalization on you, you anti-Semite, for not agreeing with us. You see how that works? What the heck does it have to do, even if you believe the word anti-Semite meant Jew? But there it is now. 
you terrorists. How's that? They are really, and no one's really straightening this thing out, as I can tell. So, well, except behind the woodshed, we do our best. And a couple of you that listen, I know, I'm not, I don't want to throw everybody under the bus. I never do. I just talk in generalities. But it, it really happens that way, doesn't it, if, you, if you're honest about it. So, the FBI now admits it could have stopped it. So, it wasn't ever about the gun, is it? It wasn't ever about the militarization, which now becomes a debate point, right? Now, we're, they're, they got us so far off a point. And how do we know that, folks? As I told you last week, and I gave you the link, I'll say it again, because the Secret Service and uh, the National Education System, I think it was, I'm reading from, I'm going from memory, even though I'm looking at the uh, article here, I'm not going to read it. Uh, the United States Secret Service did a check on how these things happen, and they made recommendations on how to stop it, none of which were allowed. All of which the FBI knows about, and the President, and the Congress, and the state representatives, they all know about this. And so the writings on the wall that we're looking at an agenda and your whole governmental process is involved in it, folks. See, your Second Amendment right has to do counter to the interests of government, doesn't it? In its essence, doesn't it? That they, we were put on notice even a year after the, inst- the ratification of the Constitution that the government was coming for us and we needed a tool. And they're coming to take it. And they're going to do it. I'm not going to say they're going to do it in the ultimate because we still have this to say if we're going to step up properly. But there is evidence today they're here to take it. The government, now we see, completely setting up. They're the self-inflicted wound, I keep telling you, advances this whole thing. It's one of the methods. You cause myself, you cause, I, I cause myself to be a victim. I'm triggered. And now I've, I, I get the sympathies of the world to protect me. And what are we looking at under the Libra Code? Nothing more than the occupying force securing itself. Oh, you forget about that connection, yeah? It's all consistent, folks. So, we are, they already had, I, I didn't need to hear the FBI could have solved it. I, saw, I heard enough facts before. You too, probably. But what did we do to, to you and cry this thing to point out all the anomalies where we could if it was important? Where are those of you in Florida didn't go down there and, and hit that legislature and put the pressure on them on multiple levels. There's all kinds of levels you could have hit. I don't know what one would work for you because I don't know those people. you got to look at the people. It's not a government doing a darn thing. It's every one of the people that are in there. The men and women that fill the offices. So, we knew this was all coming down. We know that this whole thing shows us that we've got a problem and we see the anomalies. Another one, hero SWAT team members suspended for responding to the massacre. Because they did it out of protocol. Maybe properly so, but you see, that's military, isn't it? Suspended to go help. And find out there's confusion as well. Maybe to their credit, there was confusion. I get that. We have evidence of that. We've got to give a little bit of leeway, maybe. There's a lot of confusion, but there's questions that are not answered in the fact of an emergency. Go Listen, when I was a firefighter, a, 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 a volunteer firefighter, we never stood by to watch the structure burn, ever. I knew the enemy was inside that building. I knew the enemy was inside that building at a time that was the highest risk to go in a building. And we still went in the building. How smarter, how intelligent was that, folks? And I don't know, for me, it wasn't an adrenaline thing. It was just a thing to do. It really wasn't an adrenaline deal. Yeah, I got get, I get kicked in to, to respond, but... I don't think I ever really thought of, oh, this is a cool thing to be all, you know, fired up over. Uh, it was some, somebody could be dying in there. You need to, you need to resolve this. There's a, it's called a flashpoint. There's a time when a structure is right before it flashes over and the entire room becomes enveloped. And it happens in an instance. And I was involved with one uh, ma- mobile home fire. 90, you got about 90 seconds in a mobile home fire. And I was involved in that and I was on the, on the front end of that, that hose. And I told you a little bit about this story. I've seen the flashover. Luckily, I'm aware enough, and I positioned myself so I wouldn't be affected when it did. We couldn't. We got there just behind the time we should have been there. Well, it didn't help that the two people were arguing at the pumper truck on who was going to turn on the pump for me. But notwithstanding that, and it wasn't me, and it was me and another junior behind me, who we found out later was actually too young. He was excited. He wanted to get involved. He wasn't supposed to be behind me at the at the point of the fire either. So, again, we have a problem. But never do we rush in uh, but to save the structure. We never stood by to watch it. 
People are dying inside. I can relate directly to this, uh, or could be dying, and these cops stayed outside. When the SWAT members showed up, it's all confusion, but they stand outside. Now, from a private, this proves again they don't have any duty to save you. They can save themselves first. What's that? The Libra Code says our soldiers come home, don't they? No, der no derogation to soldiers fighting legitimate fights. I mean, they should come home. You should be well enough armed to go out and protect your nation from an invasion and come home from it. Yes, but not in the way this is being promoted. So we have evidence of a newly released, released Florida school shooting. Police scanner audio raises serious questions. Yeah, lots of questions. It points out that there's a lot of, no matter how much they, they even if their they're drills are actually causes, uh, let's say, let's take that away. They, they, there's lots that goes on during an emergency. A lot of questions going on all the time. I don't care how well you plan it, how well you're, uh, you're, you're, you're practiced. So this leads up to a process here. Uh, we're looking at underlying things that went on about Florida. I'm starting to see really big anomalies that actually are not anomalies at all. If you understand, it could be a plan. Or it's being used as a plan. And these things come up because of that. Again, we talked about the how mobilized was everybody uh, to uh, never again, you know, that whole product nationwide. How, how can you disregard this? So this is all be feeding into my observation. This is actually a condition leading to the next step that's going to be taken. And then we get this story sent to me by uh, a, a listener uh, of a story here. I mentioned his name, Cowboy Tech. Was, he goes, this is of interest, isn't it? <laughs> uh, retailers uh, sued for refusing to sell guns to an Oregon man. Retailers sued for refusing to sell guns to an Oregon man. Remember, Florida just raised their 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 limit of 20, from uh, 18 to 21. Keeps a 21 a 20 year old man from getting a gun now. Well, you can go to war at 18 or 17 and sign up, and maybe by 18 go in. But but he can't buy a, a rifle. What's the purpose of the Second Amendment? And so let's. I wanted to focus. What's the purpose of the Second Amendment? That should be your leading point. Well, let, let's read the here a little bit. Uh, because as we go along, we're going to find out that something else goes on about this case. A 20-year-old Oregon man filed age discrimination lawsuits against Walmart and Dick's Sporting Goods on Monday, claiming that the retailers refused to sell him rifles because he was under 21. Tyler Watson of Gold Hill, Oregon, claims that in both lawsuits, one in each county of the resident of the residing citizens of the corporation stores. Uh, claims that, that in both lawsuits that the stores discriminate against his age by refusing the sales. I want you to listen to this, by refusing the sales. In the complaint filed against Walmart in Josephine County, Watson claims Walmart, quote, has committed illegal age discrimination, close quote, according to the Oregon state law, period. So, I'm reading this and I'm saying, what do you mean, period? There's a whole other, lots of stuff that should be coming to bear here. But he says, period. In a similar complaint filed against Dix in Jackson County, which I think is actually a field and stream, which is their derivative uh, company, which they use to scam everybody, too, about what one store does, Dix doesn't do, what, what, one, what another store that they own does do. Uh, Watson claims that he was refused the sale of a 22 rifle. Bottom line on this thing is that he said he was just in there to get the rifle, nothing more, which which kind of a little red flag. Why would he even say that? Why would somebody pop up with the question, you know, why are you doing Oh, well, just to buy a rifle. Why does that even be a question? But this is what pops up. Both lawsuits are seeking punitive damages as well as attorney fees. I want to point that out because when you see the section of the code that they're using, which is not in this report, which means I had to keep going, uh, I'm, I'm with you. You're showing I'm going to just kind of go through what I did, what you would do, uh, that I still have problems with these things until I find enough information to start looking for things. Uh, that he, he's, this is a punitive damages and this is, um, attorney fees. Well, that seeks, that, that, that is, uh, to me, that speaks to an injunctive remedy right there. Okay. Right, right all by itself. So I'm looking to see if the law we would get to finally has that provision. Uh, so then we move on. I got any more information. Uh, another story I find: Walmart Dix had sued. Oh, Dix is interesting. This this uh, this name interesting with the underlying problem that's being avoided in preference to a discrimination statute, uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. Walmart's dis 
A dick sued for raising the gun buying age. Hey, this is a policy with a private policy within the store. Now, at one point, I'm saying, you know, every retailer should, should have his own provisions, but we're not talking about something normal here. And so this would be, understand this is the, this is our condition, and this is the way I would address it, given the condition. Whether or not I agree that someone has the ability to sell or not to sell to you, if we understand the underlying provisions correctly. So, this is, I want to be cautious to say that, I would say, well, you have to force these people. Well, no, you don't, because if you understand what the government does, it says, they can deny you your right to use your highway because you don't know how to say it otherwise, just because you use it. Now that. Now why aren't you willing to put, to agree to put on something else, somebody else, the same thing that they put on you, if you're agreed to be an accessory to the crime against you? But to me, this whole thing just becomes on its head. The reasoning is not reasoning. Because it all starts from the wrong foundation. Uh, the, the companies are corporations. They're not people to, notwithstanding the agreement that they are. And I can identify quite a few places where they're not. But since they are, we have to use that against them if they're going to harm us. Because that's all we have at this point. And I've explained how you do that. If every person's a corporation or a legal entity, how do you show you're not? You want to talk about, oh, I'm a flesh, blood, red, pumping blood, man, and all on the land, all that nonsense. But there's a simpler way to show that the system that they have set up for us is not ours, the people, the men and women. So that they're a corporation, you can't put your concepting on this. This is the system that we're brought into. They sue. He's suing underneath uh, discrimination under Oregon law, solely Oregon law. Then they reference the 19-year-old the former student fatally shot 70 people in Florida. In every story, they bring this up. So I'm starting to say, okay, here's a, this is a problem. They're not focusing on just the article. They're being in relation to the act happening across the country. When I see that, I see this is bookending, and this is a, probably a plan. For as distant as it looks, it's not internal. It's not to those that are running the agenda, like the nationwide plan that, that came up. So I'll read again. Employees are at both stores who told Watson he could not purchase firearms because of his age. He accused both retailers of, of violating Oregon's age discrimination law. All right? So let's... Everyone, oh yeah, you're not supposed to be de denied uh, based on certain things. Na the national origin, creed, uh, color, age, all this stuff, right? Civil rights, folks, is what they're talking about. Free black people. What about the ones that didn't need to be free? Do you ever think about all these things, folks? How does this all play together? That they're f funneling this thing down into a very narrow place. If you listen, if you know what you're listening for. Walmart says they stand behind their decision to plan to defend it. Okay, so we got a little bit of response. Dix won't respond. That's fine. They're all going to go look at this law. What's the law? They're still not talking. Okay? Got to keep moving. I got to figure out what's going on. Now I've got a little bit of trap. Thank you for the emailer. Now I've got to look at this. I got to spend a little more time to figure it out. Uh, you did get my interest, uh, but it's not going down the fact that my first response is, well, good, someone's going to fight on age. Uh, and maybe on the Second Amendment. My response was, uh, based on the Second Amendment, they can't. Just on the Second Amendment. I didn't know, understand this thing called the discrimination for age based in the statute of Oregon, an Oregon code. So I would get over to a news article, which was very helpful. You'll get both those links, uh, two titles, two videos, uh, and the text of which was critical because it has most of all the information I need to see it. Uh, and you should too. And I'm going through this to let you see how the method works out so you can start anticipating these things are an agenda that's moving and in, and, in, and, in, and in motion to harm you or defeat you in some way that's collateral to the real point that should be made. And if you keep doing this thing or you allow the collateral point to be made, which is not a point at all, it's really just a crime, it, it's the felony against us. And that the Bar Association appears to be the main, uh, the main uh, progenitor of all this, to focus on who's doing it to you, as an agency of this, every state, it seems, as well, a private professions union, no less, uh, then you're going to miss the whole point about how your life is being diminished and into the place where you're going to be the anti-Semite because you're going to say, wait, well, this is globalism. As I told you, it's coming. It's all here. It's all written down. It's not even a question. It's not my opinion. I wouldn't even know about it. I'm not that, I'm not that intelligent somehow. I missed a whole lot until I started reading the stuff, the black and white in my eyes, 
and started putting two to two together, not just accepting everything, and making it fit into a function. Because it does. It's not like making up the function. No, it starts to fit in the function. No different than uh, you putting a lid on a jar. There's a function of that screw that's inside there, uh, putting that lid tight to that jar. It's all that way. Pretty mechanical, actually. Uh, after retail gun lawsuit, Oregon Labor responds and prepares was a head headline for one of the articles from an, a, news, uh, an, uh, a TV station. The other uh, article was 20-year-old local uh, sues Dick's Walmart over gun sale age. Well, I found it pretty fascinating. Did you did you get that, folks? That the uh, title here was after retail gun lawsuit, Oregon Labor responds and prepares. That caught my eye. Why is Oregon Labor involved? What is this? What does that have to do with the Second Amendment? What does that have to do with buying a gun at Walmart? It was my first question if it's not yours. The second story I titled is just kind of an innocuous title. Well, inside these stories is the wealth of information now. They talk about all the things of BOLI, which is, is the communications director. This is, that, this is the uh, Oregon Labor Bureau and Industries is preparing for, uh, for more complaints. For people that are being denied, they're getting all geared up to get your complaint, given that you're going to give them one, that you're discriminated against in a, in a place that sells, uh, sells guns. Now, I still, what, what does the Bureau, Oregon's Bureau of Labor and Industries have to do with buying a gun is your first clue. Our task is not to be an advocate for the person bringing the complaint or the respondent in the case, the, re, the retailer, he said. We are fact finders and we look to determine if there's a substantial evidence of a violation. A violation for what, folks? You're getting my additions here as I'm looking through the violation for what? Discrimination for what? Currently, state law only provides age exemptions for alcohol and marijuana. Well, uh, did you? What's the problem with that, folks? Is is alcohol and marijuana a prohibition against infringement by the Constitution? Probably both state and federal. I didn't have time to go to see the state. I think the state has the same one. You don't infringe the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, keep and bear. So they don't even mention the Constitution of Oregon protecting it here, do they? No, it's a statute under which the Oregon Bureau of Labor and Industries is getting involved over the purchase of a gun. Do you hear a problem? Do you hear the big con uh, the anomaly coming up here, folks? Do you hear it? So they're going to treat your right to bear as an alcohol or marijuana. Wow, that's pretty fascinating. This is my mind going like, okay, what's going on here? This is not what it seems. And this, but this is the method. This is how they do it. it Get you all buying in. This is the way the court's supposed to, this is the way the case is supposed to roll out. So now we come to where we're going to get some little more teeth on what we're going to go look. How are they going to do all this? In light of this lawsuit, the Bureau has plans to work with lawmakers to address the public accommodations law, or S 659A, in the 2019 legislative session. Quote, we believe the legislature should look at a public accommodations law to allow retailers to the flexibility to have common sense limitations for young people such as the 21-year-olds, said Burr. Did you just hear the federal policy? Did you just hear the common sense mantra, the national, con the global common sense mantra that the agency of the state of Oregon already has it in them to work with the legislatures to change this law to stop the eight, to discriminate against 18 to 20, 20 years old, if you didn't catch that. Oh, interesting, is my thought. What is this uh, public accommodations law at 659? How far off of buying a gun have we got that I'm looking at public accommodations law and discrimination by age? which I already know federally has been defined to be a civil rights problem for freed black people. Okay, we'll extend it to those white citizens under Title 42, Section 1981, that are to suffer exactions of every kind and no other. Pains, penalties, punishments, penalties, taxes, fees, fines, and all this other nonsense that we agreed to as our civil rights equally shared. If you don't understand how this is working, just keep throwing in all the facts I've been telling you for years. The common sense limitation is the global mantra of gun control, gun theft. 
the, the, the undermining of a, of a prohibition in the Constitution. So now I'm looking at a public accommodations law. Um, then it goes on. Uh, yeah, then the other, other, uh, the other criminal steps up, which is fascinating in this article. You really need to see how this works out. You see the, the, the bigger, the bigger imposition coming. You see this as an agenda. These people are now stepping in to impose with the legislature, the conducive legislature, to throw in a prohibition underneath this discrimination law and treat it like it's alcohol or marijuana. Those are in commerce again, aren't they? NBC5 five, NBC five spoke with Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley about the case today. He agrees the laws around age and gun purchase should be re-evaluated. So you hear the setup for the takedown. Everyone's on board to go to Florida with their own ruling to move this thing to 21. This is on a discrimination. This suit is about discrimination on public accommodation. Uh, in one of the articles, I found the, the link, literally lit the link to the complaint. Pretty cool. That was another red flag. These are usually hard to find. Why is this one so available? There's a promotion going on, as far as I can tell. And they go through and they, they explain the little facts. It's actually a cool, simple little complaint. You can see how to do a complaint. I'm going to point out a couple of things. He refers to 659A, specifically 40, sub 40, uh, 403, sub 403, sub uh, section 403, and 409. In that section, he says, in addition, defendant has publicly advertised its unlawful discrimination policies by issuing a press release and other material stating the defendant will no longer sell any firearms or ammunition to any person under the age 21. This is a willful violation of 659A.409. So this is going right down to black and white, as I tell you, to do in your own stuff. It's laid out for you if you know what to look for. But this is what we're going to use as their authority. Then he goes to 6. 59885, and we looked at what they offer, and he asked for injunctive relief, as I predicted it would be, punitive damages, which would be that, reasonable cost and attorney fees, as it's offered by the statute, otherwise you don't get it, and such other relief, de de just and equitable, whatever that might be. So I predicted this would be an equitable action, uh, asserting a right against this, in a statutory sense, uh, against some infringement. They're claiming it's a 60, uh, the 659. Let's go to there. So I jump over just like you would be researching to find out the validity of this action. Now, how, my question, how are they going from this statute without reference to the Oregon Constitution or the, or the uh, uh, federal Constitution uh, to assert the right to acquire an arm you can keep? 659A403, discrimination in place of public accommodation prohibited. The attorney in the article says, but it's defined that a place that sells goods is subject to this uh, suit. And on its face, let's read that it is, on its face, just on this one section. Except as provided in subsection 2 of this section, all persons within the jurisdiction of this state are entitled to the full and equal accommodations, advantages, facilities, and privileges of any place of public accommodation without any distinction, discrimination, or restriction on account of race, color, religion, sex, sexual orientation, national origin, marital status, or age, if the individual is of age, as described in this section, or older. So let's just end right there so I can get on with the point. They're talking about the any place here that that is listed is not to suffer a, a not to suffer a discrimination. But my my look at this was, over what? Okay, discrimination, but what are, is it, is the act that you're, that you're not supposed to be doing? The, are you getting this point here, folks? It's not, they're saying that it's on a, the plate, they've defined the place of public accommodation. That there's no discrimination. But what's the conduct? that this chapter relates to. I'm, I'm pausing. You need to think about how they do this. It's so simple how, how they pull this off. They're talking about a, a, a place going to a place and not being discriminated against. But what's the act 
that you're not supposed to be discriminated for. 409, they mentioned 409. This is the going to the list of that fact that they gave a public notice that they would discriminate. So this comports with the complaint. I guess I wanted to point this out. They give, there has to be a notice that they intend to discriminate. Notice that, uh, notice that discrimination will be made in a place of public accommodation prohibited. If you don't have that statement in that complaint, this complaint won't go forward. But I still have a question. What's the conduct that, it, the, that's to, that is the, the protection against discrimination? And here's where you get the consumption of alcohol by minors and marijuana items. Again, what are those? Are those a protected constitutional right? Or are those things that we understand are regulable? There's no constitutional right to drink alcohol or have it. There's no constitutional right for marijuana. In fact, most of the people legalize it, so they subjected themselves to worse. You know, that, that wasn't my question. That wasn't my choice. That certainly wasn't, would have been how I would have went, went after it. You gave the, you gave the governments these, uh, these abilities. So what, when we have a place of public accommodation, and we can read that they further des designate that the persons under 21, the uh, frequently, frequented by minors of places of public accommodation where alcoholic beverages are served, and are frequented by persons, and then, then, except for special rates and services offered to persons 50 years of age or older, in other words, that's not a discrimination to offer a benefit to people over 50. This may not even be the truth, but that's the statutory ex guidance. This is what a, that you're allowed to do, and anybody that's a corporation or business in this state is allowed to do this, but cannot discriminate otherwise. But upon what conduct I'm still looking for here, folks. I know this might be a broken record, but this is critical to understand. The public place of accommodation now is defined. So there's not supposed to be any discrimination in a public a place of accommodation. But where is this public place? A place of public accommodation subject to the exclusion in subsection 2 is section, and this section means, and I'll just read the first one, any place or service offering to the public accommodations, advantages, facilities, or privileges whether in the nature of goods, services, lodging, amusements, transportation, or otherwise. And the attorney said, because this statute defines it as a place uh, essentially selling things in the nature of goods, the rifle itself, I'm going to use this statute, 659-400, uh, and it's the prohibition against discrimination to advance the cause of someone buying a gun in Walmart and, and Field and Stream or Dick's. So I'm saying, I'm still wondering, upon what conduct? They're saying that in a place that sells stuff, that you can't discriminate. Okay, upon what conduct? And this is how they parse out these problems, and we don't quite follow, and they get, they win the day. Let me, I said, so let me, what, what is the purpose of this whole section this chapter 659A. What is it? What's it? What's it pertain to? Let's put it that way. I'm going to go right to the front. 659A01. And I just let's look down through uh, the definitions, and we see Bureau of uh, Labor and Industries. Oh, that was in the article. Bureau of Labor of Industries is is the very first definition set in here. So they're relevant to this 659A. But let's see. Let's keep going. Commissioner is defined. Employee is defined. Employer is defined. Employment agency is defined. Employment agency, folks, is defined. That was a key for me right there. Just know if it wasn't for you. Familial status is defined. Labor organization is defined. Not national origin includes ancestry as a definition. A person is defined. Again, the word individual pops up. Remember, it was a particular status as well. What's that status as well? Not just the contact. With, what is this individual status? If you don't ask these questions, you're missing how to do the analysis to start focusing on whether or not they're making a collateral attack on, on a right that you have. Respondent means any person against whom a complaint or charge of unlawful practice is filed with the commissioner. 
Well, this guy filed a lawsuit before they went to the commissioner. That's a due process problem on its own if this is properly settled, I would say, right? without even looking at the rest of it. But you see, the complaint didn't go to this statute for its remedy, did you? I think we have a problem on its face already started. Unlawful employment practice is defined. Unlawful practice is defined. Let's look at that. It means any unlawful employment practice or any other practice specifically denominated as an unlawful practice in this chapter. And I'll, st I'll end it right there. It says employment practice. Now we're back to the point of my interpretation of, of the impropriety of the use of this section. Unlawful employment practice. What is this section referring to with a labor and industries organization being having a commission to not help anybody, just take some facts down? Let's go read the purpose. It's 659A.003, right after the definitions. Right the way you would be ordered up if you're trying to understand something, correct? This is not this is not all special stuff. This is just written by it. It's supposed to be written so everyone understands if you're reading it. If you're reading it. And I'm looking at a subversion. I'm sensing a subversion. If I can do it, my spidey senses is turned on over this thing now. Something a lot's not making sense. When it starts making sense, folks. There's a reason for it, and I've identified it when, it goes, when it's with the government and these national movements that are going on. There's an agenda afoot, uh, and their plan is our problem. The purpose of this chapter, now I need to stop right there. It doesn't say this chapter parenthetically except 659A400. It says this chapter, chapter 659A, the purpose of this chapter is to encourage the fullest utilization of the available workforce by removing arbitrary standards of race, color, religion, sex, sexual orientation, national origin, marital status, age, or disability as a barrier to employment of the inhabitants of this state and to ensure the human dignity of all people in this state and protect their health, safety, and morals from the consequences of intergroup hostility tensions and practices of unlawful discrimination of any kind based on race, color, religion, self sex, sexual orientation, national origin, marital status, age, disability, or familial status. To accomplish this purpose, the Legislative Assembly intends by this chapter to provide, and then it goes through the list. Let me go back and tell you and reread the first part. Did you miss what the purpose was, did you, or did you get the answer already? This chapter is to encourage the first, further, fullest utilization of the available workforce by removing arbitrary standards of race as a barrier to employment. The entire chapter has to do with employment discrimination based on that standard, folks. You want to, and I'll ask, I'll ask this as a question. You want to explain to me how the purpose of 659 being to allow a remedy to those that are discriminated in, those in the workforce that are discriminated against in their seeking employment, what that has to do with buying a rifle at Walmart? And unless you can identify that, you've now seen how they're subverting what this place of accommodation interference is over your right to bear, keep and bear arms. And I talked to a colleague because a lot of our guys I talk with are, are into this type of stuff and talking about it and you know, passing information on them. And I like to keep them accurate. I said, we better have you look at all you guys look at all this. You need to review what I've just found. And you need to answer the question, what does a workforce uh, employment discrimination remedy statute have to do with buying a rifle at, at Walmart? And, and, and I need to know what that answer is. Or, or we've identified this is the wrong application of the wrong law. And my colleague said, well, what about then? Wasn't the uh, Sweet Cakes case where the the bakers who didn't want to make a cake to, uh, we covered this a quick, a quick bit on, I didn't study it too much, uh, make a cake for a gay couple? Wasn't that case based on a public accommodation? Well, I didn't really study the thing, and I said, but I think so. Well, he went and found out that it was the very same statute that a cake baker who make the stupid argument about being creative, try to find this. I told you at the time when I talked about the attorneys made the wrong position here. 
they tried to give this dumb response, well, because it was my creativeness that, that I can keep from them. Uh, that this 659 was, in fact, the very same statute using, utilizing the accommodation, uh, the the uh, uh, the public accommodation law for discrimination for employment of the workforce against a cake baker. My question there then is, was the gay couple asking for a job? And if they weren't, how is this how is this relevant? Again, how are they taking down your rights to do business, your rights to do the law? This is interesting protection on the other side on Walmart. I can see their answer. Absolutely going to see what their answer is. The, the uh, Mr. Taylor wasn't seeking employment. Dismissed. Whether or not it goes there, I don't know. What I want to point out to you is that the attorneys took this on, and they apply it through, oh, well, it worked for the, cake, the gay couple. Let's put it through your rights through a public accommodation discrimination employment case. And I have to ask you again, what does that have to do with buying a gun at Walmart? Now, I'll give you another observation what came to me after I noticed what this whole thing did. And this is, I'm doing some quick research trying to qualify if I told the Cowboy Tech the right answer. And I had found, after researching, I had told him the incorrect answer, of assuming that the attorneys had done it correctly, that they went after the Second Amendment protections. When I didn't see any re reference to the Second Amendment, we were going through this thing called the public accommodation. I said, well, oh, we got a problem. And now I've exposed for you how a company making cakes got itself a $135,000 judgment against it, and all the courts agreed that it was properly applied, the public accommodations were public, uh, properly applied without the employment, is to show you the entire bar system is set up to set it sets you up to take you down. I haven't qualified this more to tell you. The, the Sweet Cakes case appears to have a judgment, they, a, a, a void judgment here that they need to go act, act against. This case is going to lose if Walmart comes and says, move to dismiss because this section's no good. And that's going to be used by the system. The very nature of the filing of the case, you have Merkley going to reevaluate this 18 to 21 thing, which they're going to take and discriminate against the very point that the, the board is there to not discriminate. They're going to make now a policy working with the lawmakers of Oregon, the pioneer police state. Uh, they're going to now take away the 20, 18 to 20 year olds. They use this, even if it's a win or a lose, to adjust the line and take a little bit more incrementally. But here's what I offered after I saw all this. Uh, back to, uh, I think it was Cowboy Tech and uh, a couple of other people. I, I realized that this 18 to, uh, there's a problem with moving this 18 to, to 21 down, uh, or, or up to 21. It has to do with the fact, also, notwithstanding the, the, the fact of the age and capacity, the ability to make a contract is why the military can't take you, I think, is one of the main, main reasons. Uh, the, that the, the ability of capacity is determined to be 18. You can make a contract to go do why? Because you're you're making a contract to go work with the government as a soldier when you get uh, when you get uh, conscripted or even in, or, or even uh, 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 drafted. You're, it's part of a, a, a perceived obligation and duty. Uh, you're not going to get away from that. You're going to suffer the penalty. You deny it's there. You're going to find yourself in jail. So this is the reality. Uh, so, but looking at this, the 18 moving 18 to 21 caused a problem in my original, my original thought, what I thought they were going to do. And it's not a discrimination based on a public accommodation or even the Equal Rights Act. It's actually a requirement that the federal government has established that we understand comes through the Second Amendment. It's really not the Second Amendment right for the purpose of the Second Amendment to, do, to defend yourself against the government. It's actually the point that they use when they define the militia as those people having the duty and obligation to protect the country. It doesn't say to go over somewhere. It's from a direct invasion is what this relates to. I'm not going to get into that analysis. What I want to point out is that the pro more proper appearing answer would have been not to go through public accommodations to address an employment discrimination to buy a rifle. It would have been to go through the militia uh, uh, statute, which interestingly is called the Dick Act of 1903. So now we see the corporation directly confronted, its own name is confronted, uh, confronting the act which imposes the standard it has to apply to. Now this is where the hesitation I think Grimmer has about the 
for uh, the, the the firearm license, the federal firearm license. That's a license to sell firearms. That's not arms. Firearms are particular. But that's a license for a corporation to sell them. Okay, whether or not that's supposed to be existent to be able to acquire it, I'm not discussing. I'm saying that exists. And they have, by the license, by the very nature of the license, an obligation and duty to conform to federal law. Their choice is to not sell federal firearms. Uh, license this amenable thing. That's their choice. If they want to sell it, they have to follow the rules regarding that license, like anybody would for any license. If they don't want to follow the rules and they want to make a 21-year-old line in the, in the sand and not be conforming to federal law, they don't. They have the choice not to sell them. But what's the answer there but their bottom line? They can choose to violate the law and not sell, or not want to violate their policy and not sell, or they can choose to uh, have a FFL to allow them to profit from the sale, and, and they have to meet the federal guideline, which is what the DIC Act starts to, to explain, and that's been amended. I've got to be very careful to advise you away from uh, getting too wild on the DIC Act and what's on the Internet. It's not what it really did. They've been admitting it, amending it for quite a while, and it's adjusted and adjusted. But it does establish the age. And an unorganized militia, someone who's not involved with the organized militia, which is like typically now your 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 uh, national guard of the state, the unorganized militia. This is where your definition comes from, the black and white folks. For all you people trying to find all this kind of stuff, it's right in the black and white. You don't have to go far uh, to support the point. The unorganized militia consists of all able-bodied residents of the state. It didn't say man there, did it? So the stories that said a young man. Was, was was suing is a different problem, isn't it? A young man may have been, but he wasn't an individual underneath that employment discrimination law, and he may not be a resident, not by that story. So these are the jurisdictional statuses that sit out there that you have to be careful of, that you can also avoid these things with. The unorganized militia shall consist of all able-bodied residents of the state of the state between ages 18 and 45 who are not serving in any force of the organized militia or who are not on this state retired list and who are who are or who have declared their intention to become citizens of the United States, subject, however, to such exemptions from the military duty as are created by the laws of the United States. That's stated right in Oregon Law, ORS 396-105. The standard of the date is 18. If the militia is acknowledged as accepted for conscription of the organized militia parties are 18, the discrimination at 21 violates this provision. This is under state law. The federal one is absolutely consistent. But it's the DIC Act which determines it. And I think the DIC Act actually shows, not Dick's Corporation Act, the DIC Act, 1903, it, it has... Uh, a, different, a slightly different phraseology, but very, very, very close. It actually says 17. My argument before was, I thought the 17 was there. Oregon was saying 18. That means that Oregon law could be challenged to not be 17, as I thought this kid Taylor was going to be doing. That's not at all what they're going to be doing. But here's the federal provision under Title 10, 10 USC. They go through the same statement. 246 is the subsection. Militia and composition and class. So the militia of the United States consists of all able-bodied males of at least 17 years of age, and except as provided under these other sections under 45 years of age, who are who have uh, made a declaration of intention to become uh, citizens of the United States and female citizens of the United States who are members of the National Guard. Wow, they made a dispensation for gender, didn't they? Pretty interesting when you start really looking at it. The unorganized militia is going down to B2. The organized militia which consists of members of the militia who are not members of the National Guard or, 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 or National, National Naval Militia. It is the statement. The unorganized militia is defined before as every able-bodied resident. Yeah? And then when you see the process of what goes on, this is for the purpose of conscription. Under state law, the governor becomes the commander-in-chief. If you didn't think these places started out as separate countries in union, that's the last vestige of proof of that, that they can conscript you in from the uh, uh, from the unorganized militia to the organized, but if you look carefully, it's for invasion of your land. And so I'm not going to get into all that. I want to point out that the actual discrimination is being put under the obligation and duty of the federal government to be 18 and be ready to defend your country 
and being denied the right through the FFL to acquire the weapon that you're supposed to do if you didn't go and rely on the requirement to supply the weapon to you from the adjudicant general. Totally different issue. So the FFL provides the requirement that the corporations have to follow the federal law, which requires that everybody of capacity at 18, becomes at 18 able to have a, uh, have a, a, a fire, an, an arm. They now call them firearms. Uh, I, won't, I won't parse all that out tonight, today, maybe, maybe ever. It's just, anyway, so, so now we see that the, the public accommodation isn't even applicable. And if it is, mark on the beachyard.com, I want to know how. How close are you part? It says in, in 003, the entire chapter comes under em, remedy for em, workforce employment discrimination. How is ro, may, uh, trying to buy a rifle at Walmart or Field and Stream or Dick's relevant to that, stat, stat, uh, that, that chapter or the state's ability to change the uh, ability to buy under 21? See, if they change the uh, discrimination uh, for to 21, would that still apply if Merkley and the board work together with the legislators in order to admit, bring the age of 21 up? Aren't they still in violation? Because why? The discrimination for employment, the employment, the workforce employment discrimination statute purpose has nothing to do with buying a gun. They can adjust that up if they want, all the way to 45, if I guess if they want. What they're taking away, they're discriminating against those that are under 21, even though they have capacity. So that adjustment can be a thought, thought for those of you looking for seeking employment, that, that when you go do that, they did start denying you employment after, uh, until 21. It, but you see how they're misusing these statutes, and this is our problem. We allow them, without comment, to, 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 to do this to us, these bar members. They take the cases. I'm not wondering about the kid. We take these cases and they adulterate the case and they they diminish your your understanding, your knowledge. They make you think they're doing it for you, your own good. And I don't know how this case is going to go out, but win, lose, or draw, they got their point. They encroached upon a, a false imposition and they encroached upon the rights of 18 to 21 years old to acquire uh, to acquire a uh, an arm, which the Constitution says is to keep and bear. The international provision of the of the age of which is really determined on who can uh, shoot a rifle, and we see the mirror uh, of the Middle East will be anybody who's nine years old, it seems, and older, and I think even I've heard six. That to defend your land, that's the reality. So these statutory times are kind of they're, they're really relevant to the government's utility, not the Second Amendment either. I want to point that out. So this whole case in Oregon, mimicking the Florida, the bookending of the Florida case. Attempting to get or going to look at getting this appears to not even be applicable to buying a gun at Walmart. And to that extent, their their answer would be, "This is not. We didn't. He didn't come in to buy a, to get a job when he bought a firearm. This is misapplied. To dismiss this case, and and if the bar is not involved to give them empower this point, uh, they will they will uh, d they will dismiss the case, and then all y'all will think the guy don't have any rights. See how they win that." Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said is uh, thought-provoking, maybe get you involved. Uh, Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Uh, again, donate, folks, uh, where you can, as you can. Uh, Jewel, the UCY.TV, thank you for the simulcast, precast, podcast, all that cast. I uh, hope um, any of you all, minds.com and all that, uh, the bit shoot, thank you for all your support. I really do appreciate it. Uh, we're really losing a lot at YouTube, so we've got to have another one. I'll be next. Uh, I'll be with you next week. Tech Diffs or Nature Willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Whoop ass feels like. Son, I just opened a whole case of whoop ass.